Hey, what is up, guys? So, I decided to have a look at Dark World. Since the structure decks are coming out, and I'm kind of bored of playing Eldritch for God knows how long now, I decided to have some theories and go through a bunch of stuff with a lot of different YouTubers' videos, such as uh, MSC TVs, Robbie's, well, not really Robbie's decks from it, but the reviews that he does from the OCG, as well as whatever Facebook and Twitter have available. And this is the monstrosity that I've come out with. I haven't played Dark World since, like, the previous structure deck came out. And it was basically just Graffa Turbo. You just turn out three Graffas and then just hit your opponent for 9k. But some of the support actually is kind of good. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to go straight into the deck for it. Um, and then I'll explain some of the new uh, support and why I've gone through the new support. And why I've ignored some of the other stuff because it's absolutely <coughs> horrendous. So we start off with one Armageddon Knight, one Beige, one Zephros, three Brown, two Bigfoot, two Chupacabra, two Mothman, three Nessie, two Thunderbird, one Danger Jackalope, one Suchinoko, uh, three Gatemen of the Dark World, one Graffa, three Supreme Overlord, three Snow, one Dark World Ascension, three drag down in yeah, three drag down into the grave, two pot of avarice, three gates of the dark world, and two skill drain to round off for a 40 card main deck. Then for the extra, it's two of the fusion grapha, one Abyss Dweller, one Dingrisu, one Zeus, one Exciton Knight, one Bagushka, one Appalooza, one Cross Sheep, one IP, one Nightmare. Griffin, one Nightmare you one Nightmare Griffin, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Unicorn, one Zaryusia, and one Underworld Goddess. Uh, the side is a bit iffy, so don't take this wholly and solely. This is, again, I'm catering this to my locals because I'm not going to be playing this anywhere else besides that. So it is three Evenly, three Twin Twisters, three Dark World Puppet. And the standard bestial stuff that I play of the two and one. So the reason why I've gone for this sort of ratio for it is the fact that originally I was supposed to play a lot lower spells and traps, and it was just danger turbo stuff based on the old um, danger FTK list. But I came to realize that I don't need as many uh, dangers in here because obviously with the Dark World stuff I can search for whatever discard stuff I need at the time and because of the new fusion spell that also discards to fusion so it means that I can just cut down instead of having to play like I don't know, 20 dangers we can just cut it down to I think it's about 13 in here yeah 13 uh, we cut the grapher down to 1 because this is just better it's just more damage really um, it's 33 under gates. That's basically all it is. Nothing else. Uh, this card is amazing because not only does it discard itself to search for gates, it also special summons itself back if it's banished while you control a Dark World card. That counts the field spell. So you banish this from the field spell to then bring itself back and you have a free access to a rank 4, which in most things will be an Abyss Dweller. Or a Bagushka, depending on the matchup. Sometimes I have gone into the Exciton Knight, but it kind of just depends. The only reason I've ever gone really into the Exciton Knight is for um, a Flunder match, because you just make the nuke in defense uh, when you don't want to waste for the Zeus, which is kind of fun. The other Dark World stuff is kind of like a standard lineup sort of thing. Um, the only sort of different thing for the main is the fact I don't play Dark World Dealings in this, and the reason why I don't play Dark World Dealings is because it lets my opponent choose what they're wanting to discard, and I don't want that to happen, because it's either they're going to ditch a tier element card, a card that they want in the graveyard because it's going to give them advantage, or it's a card that they don't really care about. While well, Dragdown basically says, I'm going to set all the cards in my hand that I don't want discarding, I'm going to look at your hand and rip out any card that is a problem to me, and then you're going to discard anything from my hand, which, to be honest, if I have like a handful of Dark Walls and Dangers, please just discard anything, because they're all giving me pluses regardless. Like, Snow's giving me a free search, Brow's giving me a free draw, Graffer is just there for when it wants to come back from the grave. The Dangers all give me stuff that they're discarded, so... Yeah, there's, there's no bad thing that you can really rip out of my hand, really. You can try and, like, 
make me less plus, but even then, it's still the case of I'm still plussing. And as for the skill drains, um, the major reason why we're not playing three is because we don't need three. Just plain and simple, we don't need three, because you have so much draw in this deck that skill drain will come to your hand at a certain point in the game. If you're going first, it's amazing. If you're going second, it's kind of... It's, it's good, but it's not good at the same time sort of thing. So that's really it for the explanations for the main. The still kind of testing the fusion one. I don't know how well it's going to do until the structure decks come out in real life and I actually test this at my locals, because as much as I love testing on Dueling Book... I kind of am very lax on it, so I don't test as well as I do in real life. So we'll find out if it actually does anything good when um, these come out. As for the side, um, so this card called Dark World Puppet that I've just only recently read. Like, I've seen loads of Dark World lists not play it, and I can't see any reason why you wouldn't. It's a triple DD Crow. So target up to three cards in any graveyard, then discard, a f uh, banish them, and then discard a fiend. And then during my main phase, except the turn this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Target one of your banished fiends, add it to your hand. So I can do this at any point, because obviously quick play spell, either during my turn, if my opponent activates Harvenous effect, I can just spot remove all the stuff that Harvenous was going to fusion with, and as well as good cards that they want in the grave. Or... Or I can just start spot removing random stuff from rogue stuff. So this is like DD Crow on steroids. And then during my turn, if I'm up like really, really bad sort of situation, I can go Gates, banish a good Dark World card like Graffer or the Overlord, and then banish this to add it back to hand for later. So this card is kind of cracked in my eyes of like, this is really, really good. The only sad part is obviously it's... It's a once per turn effect, and I can't use both of its effects during the same turn. But besides that, this card is amazing in my eyes. Like, side this in with the bestial stuff, you have like six DD crows. Well, better than six DD crows. Evenly is just evenly in Lava Golem. Lava Golem, Twin Twisters. Uh, just point out there for all the great Dark World players that are probably going to ask this question later on. No, it does not trigger the Dark World's effects because it discards for cost, not effect. It might seem bad in the long run, but if you're discarding a Graffer or an Overlord, you're not using their discard effect, you're using the fact that they can summon themselves back from the grave. As for the extra deck, it's kind of just a toolbox. Um, there's no specific reason to play any uh, all the stuff that are in here. Obviously, the Underworld Goddess is if your opponent has a towers that you just don't want to deal with. The Dingrisu is nice, lovely spot removal and protects things from being destroyed. Zeus is just Zeus. Exciton Knight is Zeus 2.0. Dweller is fun because we play Avarice, so technically we're paying three, three Dwellers without having to play the three Dwellers. The Fusion Graffer is good for the sole purpose of the Fusion spell lets me discard the cards. If it didn't do that, it would be terrible. Um, and also it's kind of a decent for a negate thing, so... Um, it makes your opponent have to discard cards from your hand now. Fair enough, we're not playing like silver or gold or anything like that. Um, so we don't get as much pluses from it. We could play silver, we could play gold. However, I do feel that if we play those cards, we kind of have to take other things out. And if I was going to go pure into the idea of using this as like my protection negate, I wouldn't be playing the skill drains, but skill drains there. So I don't need to. Um, Griffin is just fun because you make the Griffin and uh, it's like a pseudo skill drain. Fair enough, we can't really use it to set stuff back. Fair enough, we can try and use it to set back the um, skill drain if it's removed or set down the drag down in the grave or pot of Avaris because those are always good cards. Um, but besides that, yeah, there isn't really much else to say with Dark Wars. I'm going to try and put some videos out at some point of me actually playing this at locals. So. Um, Everyone's going to enjoy it, locals, because I'm going to stop playing uh, Runic Eldritch now, um, because everyone hates that. We're either going to jump straight back onto the Crystal Beast Wine Wagon for a bit, or play this until everyone starts playing uh, Macrocosmos and Defusion at 3. So, um, as long as Flunder doesn't exist as a top contender at my locals, I think I'll be fine. I'll be signing out now, guys. Peace.